actress Gwyneth Paltrow took to the stand last week to testify in a lawsuit brought against her over a 2016 ski accident. Now, 76-year-old Terry Sanderson is seeking $300,000 in damages after he claims he suffered a brain injury and broke four of his ribs while colliding with Paltrow on the ski slopes. Paltrow is countersuing him for just $1. Both say the other is at fault for the accident. And uh, there were some... Pretty entertaining moments from the trial. Uh, have you seen any of this? I have. It's difficult to escape the clips that have gone so viral on the internet, largely because despite Gwyneth Paltrow having this reputation for being kind of an elite, out of touch, uber celebrity who's a, a Nepo baby herself and who sells these uh, Paltrow scented candles and all these other kind of odd goop items and her, and her kind of elite celebrity rich store goop, she is seeming like the down to earth one in many aspects of the trial, both because of the claims that are being made by the gentleman who's suing her, um, but also because of odd lines of questioning from some of the counsel in the case. Let's take a look at one of those clips. You were wearing goggles, a helmet. Yes. Okay, kind of looked like everybody else on the slope. That's always my intention. Okay. Probably had a better ski outfit, though, I bet. <laughs> I still have the same one. <laughs> May I ask how tall you are? I'm just under 5'10". Okay. I am so jealous. I think I'm shrinking, though. <laughs> you and me both. I have to wear four-inch heels just to make it to 5'5". Five five, well, so. They're very nice. Well, thank you. And you're not trained in accident reconstruction. Me? Yeah. No. Neither am I. I was yelling at him. Pretty loud. Pretty I was, forceful. I was pretty upset. Right? You're yeah. small but mighty. <sighs> Actually, you're not that small. And I'm so people, uh, it, it sounds like that attorney there is kind of fangirling over a, a celebrity. Now, that was just some of it, though. Eventually, she got to a, a, some more pointed questions. Yeah, to be clear, that's not Gwyneth Paltrow's attorney. No, 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 that's the opponent's attorney. So I'm sure if people just watch that, they go, well, uh, the, he's not being represented competently. The person representing the, 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 the guy who's suing Paltrow seems to be on her side. But this can be a tactic. You know, she's buttering her up a little mm -hmm. bit, seeming like a friendly, reasonable person, trying to make it seem to the jury like she likes Gwyneth Paltrow, so then maybe they'll take the, the criticism that comes later a lot more seriously. So it's not, it's not that, it's not sure. as crazy but, as it But here, here's the problem. Everybody involved here is an elite. So to the extent that Gwyneth well, yeah. Paltrow is making some of these statements about, um, you know, I was on the slopes, I, and we'll, we'll play this, we can play this clip. Yeah, let's play it right now. Uh, she, about how she lost, her, her damages are losing half a day skiing. Take a look at this. And he has deterred you from, in, and he has deterred you from enjoying the rest of what was a very expensive vacation. Well, I lost half a day of skiing. Uh-huh. Yes. Right. That seems out of touch. On the other hand, he is there. <laughs> he was there on those expensive ski slopes as well. I mean, it's it's just like a privilege off. So people are making this point. This guy is suing Gwyneth Paltrow for three hundred thousand dollars in damages. Gwyneth Paltrow, her company apparently is worth two hundred and fifty million dollars. Not even factoring in all of the money she's made from mm -hmm. her movies over the years. She could pay this guy off. She's the she... president of Stark Industries. She's married to Tony Stark. <laughs> all right, nerd. We get it. Yeah. <laughs> but the but the point is that she's saying that she doesn't want to. It seems to be a matter of principle for her, and she's countersuing for just one dollar in attorney's fees. She's not trying to get anything back here. Now he is accusing her of running into him. He's accusing her. Uh, sorry, she, he's accusing her of her running into him. She's saying the inverse actually happened, that he abutted her from behind, that there was a grunt, that his skis went between her legs, that she was uh, disoriented and almost, you know, fearful for a second about what was actually happening here. She's a celebrity and maybe thought that someone was trying to take advantage of her, all of this kind of stuff. But given what he's accusing her of, Giving that the, the, the brain, the traumatic yeah, brain injury. Yeah, he says he suffered a lot of neurological damage. Well, the, the, what he's characterizing as neurological damage, as it's come out in the testimony so far, is that he was charming before, that he enjoyed doing wine pairings before, <laughs> that he enjoyed doing all these elite activities that he no, lo no longer this does. This is not the most relatable trial. It, it, exactly. Here, here's a quote from an article about this in, in Slate. He said, quote, before this crash, Terry was a charming, outgoing, gregarious person. After the crash, he's no longer charming. 
<laughs> and the other author here goes on to point out, uh, if my lawyer told the whole courtroom I wasn't charming, I'd be getting a new lawyer because of the insults. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's, so there's a lot of uh, fighting over the substantiation of the neurological damage. Um, I mean, he's, he's an older man. Sure. Getting old. I think it's hard to, uh, I think it's going to be hard to prove beyond any, beyond you know, what the standard of evidence is in the case that uh, that the accident is, is directly attributable to uh, his change in mood and mentality. Right. Um, I also kind of feel this way. Look, I, I've actually never been skiing, um, but it sounds like a kind of a, an activity with some threshold of danger involved. Oh, yes. And like, if you decide to do that, I, 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 again, I don't know that this is consistent necessarily with what the law says, but I, I think you kind of take on or should in some sense take on some risk if you're doing it. It's kind of dangerous. Yeah, look, things happen can, on the slopes. Yeah. And I, I'm not, so I've only skied a few times in my life, but the last time I skied on my last pass down, it was an icy day and I passed two people being taken down the slopes on those stretchers. And I said to myself, well, this is a sign that I should not go back up again. Yeah. <laughs> like, this, these are not conditions for a novice like me to be skiing it. And I'm so not a thrill seeker at all. Um, I saved my thrills for the Dungeons and Dragons table. <laughs> okay, all right, Robbie. Uh, so, but look, the, some of the allegations, some of the allegations me. that have been made are about whether or not you know there's like slope awareness, whether or not you know he call, oh. is, did you call out to the person, did you act recklessly, you know there's like you know. Uh, protocols for how you're supposed to behave apparently and there's been some back and forth about whether or not people behaved appropriately but I think that you're right ultimately it seems like these kind of things happen it would be very difficult to prove that um, uh, Paltrow was acting so recklessly that a collision on the slopes uh, makes her liable for what seems to be at this point some very ambiguous uh, and difficult to right. prove damages. It's also the case that her kids are going to be on the trial apparent, uh, on, the, on the stand apparently next week. They're just teenagers. Uh, her husband and children were all with her on this trip and were witnesses to various degrees of what happened uh, and what happened immediately after the, the accident. So yeah, I think the, the, uh, the plaintiff is trying to say that maybe uh, the kids distracted Gwyneth mm. uh, or something of that nature, but I will have to see, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, it's it seems like a dangerous kind of thing to do. I, I uh, once, uh, I, when I was a kid, there was one summer where we were in a, a, a frozen lake up north, northern Michigan, and we were staying with uh, friends of my parents who had a snowmobile, mm -hmm. and I loved driving the snowmobile mm -hmm. across the lake until I crashed it, and then I, I lost any <laughs> any. Uh, uh, enjoyment in kind of winter outdoors activities that are even slightly, slightly well, if, dangerous. If you had crashed into some famous uh, Detroit area celebrity, Aretha Franklin, let's say, maybe Eminem. you could have gotten a solid three hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, next time, Robbie, aim better. I, uh, I crashed into a sign. I crashed it directly into a, Ju a judgment-proof sign. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! More rising right after this.